Hello, and welcome back to Satisfactory Outpost in the Desert. Uh, between the last episode and this, and now, I've made a massive loop of most of the world of Satisfactory, and I've collected 56 hard drives, and uh, a lot of other goodies. We've got, uh, you know, nearly 200 motors, almost 300 computers, a lot of stuff that'll be really useful in knocking out uh, future milestones. Uh, we're back in the desert now. We are uh, directly west of our, our factory. You can see the space elevator in the distance. And we're at one of the, the desert drop pods. This one only requires 10 rotors. You can unlock that for number 57. Now we're kind of up on the, the cliff if you're trying to find this in your own game. It's up along the, the western wall. It's about halfway up. And now we're going to head back to our factory. You see, I'm leaving some stuff on the floor there, but my inventory is completely full. There's just no room. So we'll uh, sprint back to the factory and start the long process of turning in these hard drives. Each hard drive takes 10 minutes. So with 57 currently, and there's one more that's right next to our base that we can unlock now. 58. It's 580 minutes. That is a task. But uh, hopefully uh, we'll uh, be granted the alternate recipe for steel ingots that we're looking for, the, the recipe using iron ingots instead of iron ore. One thing to keep in mind when um, unlocking alternate recipes with hard drives is that um, the recipes that you see as options are restricted by the milestones you've unlocked to that point in the hub. So you won't see the, you know, the alternate recipe for for computers until you've unlocked computers in the hub in the in the hub through milestones. Uh, my trip around the, the map took a lot longer than I thought. It was it's kind of painful at times, but you know it's better just to do it all in one go and then be done with it for a while so you're not constantly running back out you know looking for more alternate recipes with more than 50 to process through the ma'am I know that I can get a, a huge chunk of work done on the base without needing to, to find more so we'll put our first one in we'll drop the rest right here, right next to the man. We'll fill this up with um, the higher tech components. We've got motors to keep these computers. We've got a few uh, radio control units. Some heavy modular frames. We'll keep these put the batteries in there, the AI limiters, the high-speed connectors. All right. So there was one more um, hard drive right next to our base. We'll go and grab that really quickly. While I was out, I picked up uh, a lot of nutrients, too. I've got some organs. I've got uh, 35 power shards. I've been told there are enough slugs on the map to provide uh, like over a thousand power shards. But personally, I never use power shards unless it's on a uh, resource node. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that the um, the jump in power consumption is, is justified outside of resource nodes. 
So, you know, I, I don't think that I'll need more than 50 or 60 power slugs total. Depending on how large this base eventually grows to be. Okay, we'll pop this last hard drive to the stack there and we'll put our let's put our power shards in the hub. Oh, uh, you'll notice the, uh, there are different colors today. There was a patch this morning that changed the color of some of the, the items. These are orange now instead of yellow. Same with the hard drives. Uh, so before I left on my, my giant uh, trek, the one thing I did do was I put a a miner on the, the iron patch here and I just routed it to our steel setup just so we could start to accumulate uh, a lot of steel pipes and steel beams while I was away. And it looks like this is completely filled up, which is great. We're going to need a ton of steel beams. I'm just going to Put down a few storage boxes here. Remember, this is all temporary. We're going to quickly be uh, transitioning whoops, from uh, this starter factory to uh, an outpost, or uh, a setup using multiple outposts, each with like a specialized production. But I think the first thing I want to do is use some of the the goodies that I found near the drop pods to uh, burn through several milestones in uh, tiers three and four in the hub. So let's see what we can unlock here. We've already got all of three, all of tier three done. It's excellent. Let's get. Hypertubes and Logistics Mark III. Okay. Actually, I think... Yeah, I put all these in the, the hub at the end of the last episode. Alright. So that gave us uh, Mark III belts. Milestone reached. Logistics as well as the industrial storage, storage container, container and the and stackable uh, pipe supports. I wonder, there was a there was a patch today, and I wonder if they fixed that bug where you couldn't combine... Nope, they did not. It's interesting. <laughs> right now you can just put them inside each other? Which, I mean, I guess it, as long as it's on the ground floor, that's fine. I wonder... Okay, that's like an interesting workaround. Yeah, still still not great. So we still can't... Um, they should be, uh, you know, interchangeable on the ladder. Oh well. If you really wanted to, I guess you could just uh, stack your conveyor poles first, and then uh, you know just line this up. Yep, they can only go on top of each other, but then you could always remove, you know, the, the pipes you didn't need. You know that works. And still get your belts on the the others. Um, that's not really a bad idea. Let's not deconstruct anything more than we intend to here. So that'll work. That'll be nice. Uh, they also added the ability to put these junctions on the. Well, they're supposed to be able to. Oh, we don't have any copper sheets, that's why. You can put your junctions and your, your pumps on the concrete, on the foundations, rather than needing uh, to just to lock them to a pipe. There are also several changes for um, splitters, 
Splitters should now lock to the end of a conveyor belt or to a, a stackable con conveyor pole. It's always good to have those options. So that's what we need for our last uh, tier 4 milestone here, hypertubes. We just need 300 pipes and 300 copper sheets, not a problem. Hyper tubes are super fun. Uh, they were definitely a a big factor in my decision to to build in this outpost style. They'll uh, you know cut down the amount of of running you have to do between the outposts. We can just have a network of of hyper tubes. They also look super cool, and they're surprisingly simple to to build. So once we've unlocked this this last um, this milestone in tier three, I think we'll be ready to start thinking about um, moving forward with our outpost system. And the first uh, first outpost, is, you know, it's just going to be it's going to be iron. You know, that's the basic component or basic resource for you know everything else moving forward. So we'll uh, there are four or six pure iron nodes out here to the west. We're going to build um, Mark II miners for all of them. We'll just say six. And um, we'll start routing them to a location that's central to those iron nodes. We'll put down some foundations and then build a, a large factory that's totally devoted to to smelting iron. You know, and then the, the refining into iron plates, iron rods, screws, probably reinforced iron plates as well. Yeah, I think those four products for sure. Okay, let's unlock hacker tubes. Easy. Milestone reach. Fixit Incorporated has processed and incorporated frequent pioneer requests for pipe based personal transport. Introducing hypertubes. Safe, aesthetic, adaptable, fun. Enjoy a view of your hard work as you soar through incredibly tight turns. Build them today. Note Fixit Incorporated is not responsible for any harm caused by irresponsible use of this product. All right, so let's get the materials we'll need to build our six Mark II miners for iron, and then we'll load up on concrete. Just going to offload some some of my inventory that I don't need right now. Won't need these. I uh, won't need these. Can put these nutrients in the resource chest. Same with the organs. I don't think I'll need black powder. I'm not going to need the circuit boards or the motors. Okay, good. I do want to pick up a few basic materials. The uh, plates and rods and concrete you know, for uh, supports. Oh man.
and now we'll really load up on concrete. If we've, we've got any here. Yeah, good. Maybe our, our second outpost should be concrete. Pick up, uh, actually, we've got a chest full of portable miners over here. We need 12. Oh, I, I still need 10 modular frames, too. My bad. Uh, the question is, do I want to connect these outposts by foundations? I think I think it's the smart way to do it. You know, it'll look cleaner. We could run our hypertubes on the foundations. We it'll we'll likely have vehicles too. You know, traversing between our various outposts. And you don't really need a road of foundations for vehicles, but it doesn't hurt. All right. Steel rod, that seems terrible. Rigger motor. This is actually a good recipe. Uh, copper alloy ingot. What is this? Ten copper ore and five iron ore to make... 20 copper ingots. So you double the amount of ingots you're getting per copper ore, but you have to add 5 iron ore. That's a, actually a really good production rate. 100 per minute, you know, a, a smelter produces at a rate of 30 per minute. But you'd have to use a foundry. I think we're going to go with the motor for now. Uh, this, this is actually not as good as, as it was in update 2. They've kind of well, no, it seems alright. This actually may be better than in Update 2. I'm, I'm pretty sure in Update 2 that the recipe was two rotors and two stators and an oscillator for four motors. So we'll go with this. We're going to have to set up a crystal outpost really before we can jump into that automation. There's one hard drive down. Let's throw another in. Still looking for that uh, steel ingot recipe. So I know the the, uh, the iron nodes are to the west. We can scan for them really quickly and see if we can just see them from here. There's one. Okay, those are not pure. And we're looking for pure nodes here, because I, I know they're available. Copper node is normal, but I'm pretty sure this iron node is pure. We'll use that. That iron node in the distance there, that's pure as well. Am 
Maybe that's not iron. I'm not sure if that's pure or normal. We'll have to check. sure that iron node is pure. Let's hop down and start checking. Okay, pure. Let's put down a mark two. Pure. Let's get some mark two. We'll check those. I don't think they're pure. They may be. I think there are these a few more over here too. This is pure. Impure. Okay. So there's three. Here. Normal. You know, you can make a normal work if you have to. You just pop two um, power shards into it, and it's got the same output as a pure. Pure. Okay. So now we've got four pure nodes to work with. I think there are more around here, but we can start with four for sure. Might be smart just to make a... Did I put a... I did. I put a Mark 1 miner down on one of these nodes. That's a Mark 2. Now we've got four Mark II miners. They'll each produce at a rate of uh, 240. 240 per minute. Which is the capacity of our Mark III belts. Quick check that we're not missing anything. Should have brought some nutrients with me. Grab those nuts. Uh, one big change in the patch today is the uh, the rate at which you can consume 
your nutrients. I'll show you. So before you could you could just spam these nuts pretty quickly and uh, restore your health. But now your health isn't consumed until the animation finishes. So uh, before you would regain the health as soon as you hit the left click on your mouse, like at the start of the animation, and now you don't regain the health until the end of the animation, so you can't really spam them anymore, or at least not as effectively. So we'll continue this, this platform for the, the base of our first outpost. Let's consider, is that another iron node? I'm pretty sure it is, in the distance. I think it's pure as well. We need to check on that. So if, if there are five here, you know, just plan for five. But at this point in the game, I like to consider uh, your late game throughput, you know, the the, the rates of production which you will eventually reach with Mark III miners and uh, Mark V conveyor belts. And we'll, we'll build to that scale, even though we can't fully utilize it now. That way we're not tearing everything down and rebuilding again later. So we'll go with uh, four pure iron nodes for now. Uh, and right now the Mark IIs are 240 each, but the Mark IIs would be 480. And we could even um, boost those with power shards to come close to, actually you can, you can eclipse the, the rate at which uh, a Mark V belt can handle. Mark V belts can move 780 um, units per minute. So we could just go ahead and set this iron outpost up to handle uh, four completely saturated belts moving 780 pieces of iron ore every minute. And I think that's the way to do it. So using the standard recipe, uh, 780, the maximum amount of that belt, uh, divided by 30 units of ore per smelter, that's 26 smelters per line. So with, with four lines, it's 104 smelters. Just to give you a uh, kind of like glimpse into the scale that we're looking at. 104 smelters, all of them producing iron guts. That's a lot of smelters.
so I'm gonna try to think about what that would look like. Each each belt from the miners would support 26 smelters. You know, I guess you could just set up <laughs> a cluster of, of 13 on each side of the, the mergers. drive in. Is there room for... yeah, I think there is. One more row here. Yeah. We have got to get some more concrete going. All of these outposts are going to require so much concrete. Let's go ahead and queue up uh, one cluster, I guess, of 26 smelters. Is that the way to do this? Yeah. So smelters, they don't require a lot of materials. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. What we got? Okay, steel screws were actually, it's the best screw recipe. Compacted coal, this is useful. Pure quartz crystal. This is a new recipe. Combining raw quartz with the water to make seven quartz crystals. Before um, nine, without this recipe, nine quartz crystals would produce four and a half. Sorry, nine raw quartz would produce four and a half quartz crystals. So uh, it's definitely more efficient, but you have to add water. So that must mean you're using a refinery instead of just an assembler or uh, just a, uh, a constructor. Yikes. We're going to go with compacted coal. Compacted coal is needed in turbo fuel. Turbo fuel is my preferred method of powering large factories. Okay. Let's just grab all of the components we'll need for the full like array of smelters. It's going to be um what did I say, 104? Still, you know, not a ton of resources. Just two stacks of wire and less than six stacks of, um, of iron rods and you can make more than a hundred smelters. While we're here I'm going to grab all the concrete we've got and I'm going to feed these with limestone just to produce more. already certain that uh, the limestone outpost will be the next priority. You could definitely make the argument that it should have been the first. Look at these, the way the limestone looks now. It, it looks so different than, you know, yesterday before the patch.
set up a hypertube? Why don't we? Let's set up a hypertube. Uh, let's see. We're going to need several of these. Two entrances. Uh, a few supports. I'm not sure if that's enough. We'll say that many. I, know, I really don't really know the the rate of materials to tube length yet. We may actually want more. We'll just grab this whole stack of copper sheets. Do we have everything else that we need here? Okay, that was easy. Um, now, hyper tubes need to be powered, and they're the entrance needs to be needs to be powered at each end if you want it to be uh, bi-directional. So we'll put a support here, right in the middle. And actually, let's put it off to the side. One thing uh, <laughs> you'll quickly notice with hyper tubes is that uh, the the area of the entrance can easily suck you into the hypertube, even if that wasn't your intention. Okay. You can hit R again and use the uh, switch the, the build modes here. These are pretty long. It's nice. So it's just going to... Oh, that was dumb. One theory I do have is that um, the acceleration occurs at each of the supports. So it, it seems like more supports, the more supports you have, the faster you can accelerate through these tubes. That could be wrong. It's just uh, what it seems from a little bit of observation. So, you know, why don't we just test it out here? We'll just add the supports manually every two foundations. Uh, let's, let's say every three, I'm not sure. We can do every two, that's fine. And these work the same as conveyor poles. You click once to place them, and then you can raise them if you, if you want to.
this over a little bit. is using it seems like it's using more um, more copper sheeting than I anticipated it's fine <coughs> we'll run back and get a little bit more we need to run some power also and on the end here we'll, on the entrance we'll put the hypertube entrance. It just goes right over the support when you power it up. So let's run back, drop another hard drive in, grab some more copper sheets and steel pipes. Oh, here we go. Solid steel ingot using um, iron ingots and coal. So it takes the production rate from 45 per minute to 60 per minute. That's what we were looking for. This is another one we're going to want. We're going to want at least one alternate recipe for reinforced iron plates. There are multiples. I'm not sure which is the best right now. But we have enough hard drives that we could, you know, get them both. Put this on the side here. Another entrance here. Powered up. And now we're we'll finish the tubing. Okay, let's try it out. I put the entrance off to the side here, I curved it around 
so that you're not accidentally sucked into it when you're trying just to, to run. The speed seems pretty consistent. I don't feel like we'll, we're really accelerating. <laughs> yeah. It does feel consistent. So I don't think all these extra supports... Well, I don't know. It seems like we're accel accelerating now, right? Maybe it's not a matter of the supports. Maybe it's just a... Um, oh, we'll have to fix that for sure. The, uh, it was just uh, like a, a time lapse thing. The longer you're in the tube, the faster you go. Did I buy those fences? Yeah, I don't think it's an issue of the supports after all. Definitely accelerating towards the end though. Oh, one thing to note is that gravity does have an effect on um, your acceleration or deceleration. If you curve the hyper tubes up, they'll still they'll still carry you up, but you'll move at a slower rate. And if you curve them down, you will uh, accelerate with the gravity. All right. Let's finish this platform and put down some smelters. Uh, I think the way this is going to work is that uh, on this first platform we'll have all of the smelters. And then we'll construct a second level above it that we'll use for uh, you know, turning the ingots into plates and rods and screws. Maybe we'll need a third platform, or a third level. We'll just have to see uh, what kind of room we're working with. I'm pretty sure this platform is not going to be large enough for 104 smelters comfortably, but we'll see. Let's see what we're, we're at here. So, we've got one miner off to the northwest, we've got one to the southeast, one to the southwest, two to the southwest. So, the majority of the miners are on the west side here, so we'll have all of our um, ore coming in from the west. see we've got we we have four right now right so we'll uh, have we'll use the double walls actually do we want to do single walls yeah let's do single walls it's not a big deal Put up some glass. Looks great, right? And then we'll have uh, conveyor walls. Make sure they're facing the right way. It's kind of hard to tell right now. Did they change these walls? Huh. They did. These conveyor walls are the same on both sides right now. I wonder if all walls are like that. No, these are still different. Okay. Let's 
let's turn on our flashlight. Yeah, I think they're identical on both sides. Unless there's a detail I'm missing. No, they look the same. Okay. So, some walls apparently have differences on the inside and outside. But I think these single window conveyor walls, at least, are identical on either side. I mean, with such a big setup, it may be beneficial to, to skip uh, a section there. What about these windows? Are they the same on each side? It would definitely be easier if this was if this inspection was occurring during the daylight, but that's fine. Yeah, I think they're the same on both sides. Okay, that'll give us a lot of room to work with. Let's see, I guess we'll do four clusters of 26, 13 on each side. And we'll just lay them out in a, uh, in a square, I guess. I mean, two rows of 26 clusters. So let's give ourselves plenty of room. Oh, I probably should have not counted that off, but we'll... Let's see where we get here. We can always move these later if we have to. I meant move the, the hyper tube, not move the smelters. Or add more friend to foundations if we need to. Okay. It's going to take up so much space. Why aren't these centered? That's annoying. And 13. 13. Okay. Yeah, so that's half of one cluster. And we're going to have four clusters. So, uh, yeah. Let's see, we'll put our merger. I guess we'll merge to the north here. space between the smelter and the merger. Okay. And then we'll have splitters coming in over here behind. We'll leave at least two spaces. Okay. So we'll have enough uh we'll have enough space on the, like, the width of the platform, but we'll need to lengthen it quite a bit. Like, double. This will be a, s a splitter. 
We'll leave three rows. We'll have a splitter. Which way is that output in? And then another smelter. A merger merging to the north. Just trying to get a a look at the amount of space we need here. And then one more splitter, probably coming from this direction. Yeah, I think we may want to move these one direction to the east. Leave uh, two foundations between and not three. Two foundations is fine, it's still plenty of room. Splitter, not a merger. And splitter. Yeah, that's good. That's much better. So the width of the factory is, is basically perfect. We'll move these windows down, obviously, and uh, we'll double the length of this foundation, and that will be the size of our iron outpost. So we're almost out of time. I'm just going to run back and uh, check the hard drive. And then between episodes, I'm just going to... Uh, you know, cycle the limestone into the boxes a few times so we can build up our, our concrete reserves. We're going to need a ton of that. And I'll uh, double the length of that platform. And then in the, the next episode, we can finish our smelter array and get started on constructors. What have we got? Cheap silica. This recipe why combining crystal and limestone to increase your your silica like limestone is a common resource crystal is a, a rare resource but there's not a lot of need for silica here's an alternate uh, recipe for iron alloy for iron ingots you need to combine with copper ore we've got an abundance of of pure iron nodes not a lot of pure copper so this is not an ideal recipe for us here is the other uh, alternate recipe for reinforced iron plates. It's not as good as the, the bolted iron plates, especially with our outpost setup. Like we don't want to have to be using a copper product in our iron outpost. All of these recipes are terrible for us, but uh, you know, we just have to pick one. the The goal is to have all of the alternate recipes unlocked eventually, so. With that in mind, which one you're picking is not as important. So uh, we'll call it here. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you're enjoying this series, please like and subscribe. And in the next episode, we'll pick up by um, progressing with our first Iron Outpost. Until next time.